Avermaat in de kop en ook onze naaste ligt erbij. Doster. Does it surprise you how much media attention you get? Is it is it strange? Uh, well, strange, I don't know, because I had also a lot of dreams when I was a kid and young, and uh, all the people need found some motivation in life. Somebody found this motivation, I don't know, in the music, somebody in the gym, somebody uh, in some kind of sport, somebody, you know, in speaking with people, somebody just follow the cycling because they like it and uh, it's not strange. Everybody, we have something what we like. You don't see these riders come along too often that, that aren't afraid to kind of strut their stuff because he's, he's got this uh, charisma that sells well, you know, and, and he's not afraid to ride wheelies after he wins a race. He's not afraid to, to make a joke, put out little YouTube videos of him dancing as John Travolta in Greece. You know, we, we love this sort of stuff and the, and, the, and the general public grabs onto that too. He's an image that uh, many people associate with cycling. Uh, and so he, he's a showman. The character from Peter is uh, nearly the same, uh, private, and also when he is uh, to interviews or uh, to the races. And uh, yeah, we are happy that we have that kind of rider. He is uh, fresh, he is uh, personally, and uh, he talks what he's thinking, and uh, I think also the people like it. To you, is cycling kind of a, a bit of a game? Also, battle, the mentally battle with somebody, it's uh, maybe battle about the seconds, about good decision in the right moment. Okay, you have to be concentrated for, for five hours and it's not easy. Yeah, it could be game. I mean, it's a real game, it's not in PlayStation. I was standing on the Via Roma when Peter Sagan attacked on the Pojo, and it felt like an earthquake. That's one of those things in cycling that's going to stand for a long time because seeing the rainbow jersey attack on the Pojo, the way he did, he took it in his own hands and then rode all the way to the finish in San Remo pretty much on his own. That's the sort of that's the sort of ride that stands out in cycling. We may forget the winter years from now and just remember that ride, the attack from the rainbow jersey, Peter Sagan in the 2017 Milano San Remo. We talked about that before and uh, it was very important. Uh, that we try something before, that uh, we create a small group, but uh, we come to the finish line. And uh, that's why it was a plan and it works. Okay, we don't win, but uh, that's a different story. You know, the things happening for some reason, for something. We don't know yet why, but maybe in the future you can realize that the bad what happened one month ago, maybe was good for this. That is positive thinking. The problem is with Peter Sagan is that he's so he's so dominant, teams are are Riding negatively, negatively in a sense, to try to beat him, um, and so he's he's getting a lot of second place results because of that. Well, you saw no Sagan. Is not working. There we go. 
And in fact, two riders off the front now because Sagan's refusing to do the work himself. People should be looking at, at Greg Van Avermaet because uh, everybody's blinded by the rainbow jersey and Greg Van Avermaet's running away with the classics this season. It's not a big difference between Peter and, and Greg and uh, also the other riders know Greg is one from the strongest. When you uh, are the world champion and uh, all the guys looking to you and uh, also when you are a rider like Peter that uh, have the potential to win a lot of races, not only classic races. If you win this year, you'll be the first double world champion and double Flanders champion. Lo dico? If, if, what, what does it mean, if? Some races are not so important and then uh, he's very relaxed and funny and uh, in some races you have to be very concentrated and focused. When not, uh, then uh, you don't have the possibility to win. And uh, yeah, I think now we are at that moment. The next two races, uh, Flandern and uh, Paris Obey, is uh, very important for Peter and also for the team. <laughs> For <laughs> one night before the Flanders or Roubaix, or ten minutes before the Flanders or Roubaix, you still don't know what's gonna happen. That is how I see the things, and my point of view on the races is that don't lose energy about things what you don't know. in Flanders and uh, so we're looking forward for Roubaix. Thursday we plan a uh, recon on, on the course and uh, yeah, another chance to win a monument. That was the team goal. Already uh, two uh, monuments are done and uh, so we're looking forward for Paris Roubaix. Our game, just <laughs> game about yeah, win or lose, but then we continue again. <laughs> <laughs>